visit with our field producer, Laura Payne, who's been working hard to renovate our herb gardens. Hi, Hi Laura. Tim. What are you working on today? Well, I was out doing some tidying up in the herb garden this morning, and I noticed that our tricolored sage is starting to revert back in some areas, so I'm pruning that out. Yeah, that can be a problem with our variegated uh, herbs and even our ornamentals sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a good idea to, uh, to walk around your landscape quite often and check out your variegated plants and make sure that you aren't getting that green reverting back because that's the more aggressive grower. Yeah, eventually take off. it yep. could take over the plant. Right. Wonderful. Well, I know that you've been working hard to reestablish the individual themes to our beds and we're, mm -hmm. we're going to look at that in a moment, but I wanted you to first tell me about the structure of, of the beds here. Well, what we've done is we went in, we raised these beds up mm -hmm. and then we amended the soil mm -hmm. with a pea gravel mixture, compost, mm -hmm. and then thin your soil. So this mm -hmm. is creating a very well-drained soil for our herbs, which mm -hmm. you know a lot of plants, most plants like well-drained soil, yeah. but especially our Mediterranean herbs. Yeah, they're, they've evolved on those rocky hillsides where it's very dry, so it's mm -hmm. certainly important here. And um, so you've actually mixed some of this pea gravel from the surface right into right. the soil. Right, we have a you nice, can dig down. And oh yeah, look at that. Really well-drained uh, surface for our plants. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, we've gone in mm -hmm. and we've raised these beds mm -hmm. and then we uh, divided them up into different theme gardens. Mm -hmm. So we have several different theme gardens in here that I'd like to show you. Okay. And this one here is? This is scented. our scented or aromatic bed. Mm -hmm. And in here we have something like the pineapple sage. Mm -hmm. So lovely. Mm -hmm. The leaves, this will grow very big, mm -hmm. full of these red blooms. People just love it. It's a beautiful plant. and. All these have either scented foliage or flowers that we could use maybe for potpourri mm -hmm. or or just mm -hmm. to cut and put in your in your on your dining table or in your living room or bathroom. Yeah. Wonderful. Well Kim, um, let's take a look back over here where I was working when you first mm -hmm. first came up and this is the culinary bed. Mm -hmm. So in this garden, you know, this is where you plant like your oregano and your sage and your thyme. All the herbs that we cook with. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I really love that there's a, a good mixture of foliage colors, but mm -hmm. also textures like this cardoon. That's a magnificent plant. Oh, Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Well, the cardoon mm -hmm. is uh, actually can become an invasive plant if it's in places in Argentina and some places in California. In warmer climates yeah. than we have. And mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if it goes to, uh, to seed. Mm -hmm. But people eat the midrib here, okay. and it can be eaten like celery stalk. However, in warmer climates, really warm climates, you need to harvest this before it gets uh, too hot outside or it gets real bitter. Real bitter. A lot of our herbs will do that, um, our, le our greens especially. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the herbs, you want mm -hmm. to harvest them also right before they bloom, and that keeps them from becoming bitter. Mm -hmm. And this one I love just for the structure that it gives to the herb oh, garden yeah. here. It's yeah. a magnificent plant. Yeah, and these leaves, you know, can grow up three to five feet in length. Beautiful. Now I notice you have a couple plants here in pots. Mm -hmm. This is our horseradish. Yeah. And horseradish, you can put horseradish in your culinary garden, you can put it in your scented garden, you can put it in your medicinal. This is like an all around mm -hmm. fix everything plant. Mm -hmm. And why did you put it in the pots? Because mm -hmm. it fixes everything, which means it's a very happy plant and it will grow throughout your garden and become a little invasive mm -hmm. if it's not contained. Yeah, so it, a lot of people grow it in their vegetable garden, but we like to keep it a little bit contained so we don't yes. end up with just horseradish. Right. I noticed we left a little volunteer delphinium in here and I just wanted to point out it's not edible, but right. certainly beautiful. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I just couldn't resist. But it has that nice foliage texture like our edible plant here on the end, the bronze fennel. Yes. And this, this also has a very nice aromatic mm -hmm. smell, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it's, you can cook with it and it just has, like you said, this beautiful texture on the foliage and it just kind of offsets kind of the hardscape yeah. The, the harsh cardoon. and the soft yeah. can complement each other nicely. Yeah. Well, this next bed's a little bit different. Um, the theme of it I find interesting for crafts. Right, mm -hmm. right. So in this bed, mm -hmm. you could, uh, we have like flowers in here off of the lamb's ear mm -hmm. that you would dry and use as uh, everlasting flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have like cat mint. Yeah. So you can make you a little sachet for your cat, you know, mm -hmm. to play with the little cat mint. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
Well, Laura, this little bed has a fun bit of history to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, underneath this sundial, Kim, that uh, commemorates the uh, Oklahoma Gardening's 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. I have planted a variety of thyme. We have some very low growing thyme, and mm -hmm. some more upright thyme, and then more of a creeping thyme in here. Very nice. This is your timeless garden. My timeless <laughs> garden, yes. And these plants have another interesting use, don't they? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, these plants, most of the roots from these plants are used to dye textiles, yarns, Yarn. material, okay. that sort of thing. This is a, a Mahonia, Mahonia yes, Repens, a Creeping, creeping Mahonia. mahonia. Mm -hmm. We have a, a False Indigo, mm -hmm. Baptisia, Baptisia. Mm -hmm. and Yarrow. Okay, interesting. We don't do a, a lot of that anymore, but it's nice to know what plants you can use and right. what plants were probably used historically as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I love lavender, and I'm so happy you've dedicated a whole garden to lavender. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. And hopefully we'll come back later on in the season when these are all in bloom, mm -hmm. and I can point out a few of these that really made an impression on me because they survived our winter. And it was a hard winter oh, for these. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Let's go over to this really bright uh, tansy in here. Oh, tansy, mm -hmm. yes. I love the golden tansy. Mm -hmm. But this is our uh, medicinal garden. Okay. So in here, I think people find it interesting what some plants were traditionally used for mm -hmm. medicinally. Yeah. And like your lamb's ear, you know, this was used as a bandage, you know, to uh, uh, wrap around. To wrap around a wound. It's nice and soft and yeah. absorb, absorbative, I guess, to right. soak and, up any uh, blood. Nowadays, people might want to use this for a bee sting. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. And of course, a lovely ornamental plant as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And our last bed behind us here, uh, the brew garden. <laughs> yes, this is going to be one of, uh, I think, the most used beds once everything starts growing up in here. I think so. Uh, you and I, along with Jane and the other students, are tea drinkers. Absolutely. So we have a number of plants that we can use to make a variety of teas. Right. Um, I know up front you have chamomile. It's chamomile not quite grown here. in yet, but we're getting there. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. I even put some stevia plant in here, mm -hmm. which will be used for... Uh, Mm -hmm. to sweeten your tea. It's oh, a natural sweetener. A little sweetener. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And we didn't call it a tea garden because on the trellis we grow hops. So right. different varieties of brew and those will be growing in. Uh, we've recently replaced mm -hmm. them so they'll come in. Now one last thing I wanted to point out, you have all your mints here mm -hmm. um, in raised containers throughout the beds. Yes, for the same reason I put the horseradish in mm -hmm. the container. You know we love it but you know, we can only take so much of it. Yeah, mint certainly does love to spread. Yes. Well, Laura, thank you for introducing us to the herb garden. We'll come back and visit you and uh, look at some of these individual beds later. Okay, great, Kim. Thanks.